to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Someone is blessing his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. We crown you King. We acknowledge you as Lord. Thank you. For in Jesus' name we pray like you to ask the Lord to give you an encounter tonight the Bible says the Lord appeared again unto Samuel by his word I like you to pray and cry that this is my Shiloh appear unto me by your word in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God appear again by your word appear again by your word the word that brings me lifting the word that brings me advancement the word that will shift me to a new dimension i receive in the name of jesus my heart is open to receive In the name of Jesus, the Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. You don't appear before the Lord and go down. When you appear before the Lord, it's from strength to strength. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we pray that you will speak to our hearts. We have come with our hearts open. We have come determined to learn determined to access higher dimensions of grace and wisdom spirit of the living god move among us and let jesus be glorified in jesus name i pray god bless you please be seated it's always a blessing for us to be gathered here again it says i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord and we bless the Lord again for the manifold wonders that he continues to do in our lives and across the nation. In Jesus' name. May I encourage you to remain resolute as far as your spiritual growth is concerned. Hallelujah. The times that we're living in will require high level spiritual illumination if you are to excel and um it's 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 very very important as for me i've made a commitment under god that acts chapter 20 and verse 20 will remain a reality in this house in this ministry it says, I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly from house to house. I have kept back nothing, provided it makes for your spiritual growth, it makes for your transformation, it sponsors your encountering the power of God, and it can transform you. You can be sure that it will not be held back for it, from you. Hallelujah. So tonight, please be attentive. There are always people who come to church and they allow the devil to cheat them by being distracted. In as much as God connects destinies in church, the church is not a place for business discussions. It's not a place to look around. When 
you are before the Lord, you must give him your attention. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the man who was at Gate Beautiful, Peter said, look on us. And he looked at them expecting to receive something. Hallelujah. May the word tonight bless you. Amen. Shout it louder. Amen. Amen. May the teaching tonight be a ladder Amen. that will lift you to realms beyond your imagination. Amen. He said, I went up by revelation. It takes revelation to sponsor your advancement. And the Lord himself is going to do us good tonight in the mighty name of jesus Amen. let's start with second timothy chapter four second timothy chapter four and let's look at verse seven as i prepared for tonight's teaching i i just decided to meditate a bit on this scripture and it struck me so so much and I thought to just share my contemplations. Peter is speaking, to, I mean, Paul is speaking to his son in the gospel, Timothy. And he said, I have fought a good fight. What is a good fight? A fight that has eternal value. A fight that is pro-destiny. Are we together? A fight that has rewards in this life and even in the life to come. He said, I have fought a good fight. Then he says, I have finished my course. And then he says, I have kept the faith. Paul here redefines destiny for us in a very spectacular way. Number one, he teaches us from this statement that life and destiny is a fight. And that the earth here is a battleground. It's a very powerful information he was teaching his son in the gospel. He says, I have fought a good fight. So there is a dimension to life and destiny that requires warfare. There is a dimension to life and destiny that is a fight. Now, whether you are aware or not, it does not change that reality. Number two, he also teaches us that life is a race. Hallelujah. It's a journey and akin to a race some versions will say i have finished the race he says i have finished my course so he gives us the picture of an athlete or someone on a journey are we together then he says i have kept the faith number three he teaches us that life is a gift and life is a treasure that must be guarded and protected that the possibility of losing your life and your destiny is there notice very carefully please back to kjv thank you he says i have in fact leave leave niv so that i can use it for the discussion i have fought a good fight so life is a battleground life will, re will require a fight and warfare number two he says i have finished the race you have to start to finish and then he says, I have kept the faith. This is very powerful because you see, if you understand the various dimensions that are captured in life, you will also know the kinds of preparation you need to make to face those dimensions. Are we together? If you know that life is a fight and is a battleground, then you will pay the price to learn the armory of a warrior. You will not only learn about it, you will pay whatever price it takes to make sure that the armory of a warrior, one determined to win. Imagine with me, for instance, that someone, maybe a military man, is mandated to go to Sambisa or one of these hideouts for terrorists, and then he goes there with a short nicker, like he's running, and then a short nicker, a t-shirt, a bottle of water in his hands and his sneakers ready to fight the destination is correct but the preparation is wrong because what you are about to face there is not a race 
the people you meet in a warfare are not your competitors they are enemies in a race you don't have to fight enemies are we together you call a race competition not warfare but you call a battle warfare not competition so knowing the various dimensions i hope god is speaking to someone already knowing the various dimensions that are captured in life and destiny helps you to make sure that as you sojourn make sure you have the regalia of an athlete so that if you do find yourself in the field imagine now the flip side of the story imagine that someone gets into an olympic field carrying ak-47 rpg well dressed with the helmet and stands at the line together with the rest as soon as they say on your marks set go he starts shooting around the correct destination but the preparation is wrong then the bible says i have kept the faith this is very powerful that means there is something at the end of your life at the end of your life and destiny there are some things that should still be with you there are some things that can drop on the way childishness youthfulness but there are some things you should protect and never lose if at the end of the race you do not find them you lost your life you don't have to be dead to lose your life to lose your life and to lose the faith means someone would have taken your bishopric you can lose your bishopric you can lose your lampstand your place your relevance your influence very powerful information so he says i have fought the good fight in other words when i began my journey i didn't know what to expect he's mentoring his young son in the gospel he said listen you are a young man and you are going to face life in a dynamic way let me teach you how to prepare for life do not prepare only to run you must prepare to fight and you must prepare to keep and to protect that means your arsenals should carry the armory of a warrior should carry the clothes of an athlete and should carry a treasure chest if you will allow me to use that word because there are some things that need to be guarded and protected now there are people who see life only as a battleground unfortunately when life is presented to them as a race they are busy shooting around and wondering why they are not making progress because that is not the demand for that scenario are we together imagine someone who has a beautiful jewelry gold and all of that he puts it in a treasure chest and keeps it somewhere outside maybe close to the road and says nobody should touch it just leaves it open and goes away he does not know that there are many people who desire that same thing are we together and he leaves it there only to come and find that it's been taken away i had to meditate on this scripture myself and to pray for myself it gave me such a profound revelation life is a battleground but not a battleground alone life is a race but it's not a race alone life is a gift that must be cherished and protected so in my preparing for life and destiny if i find god training me like a warrior i don't feel i'm losing because there is a place for that training there is a point where God will suddenly change your training. Listen carefully. And you find out that in a strange way, the training has switched. But you still want the training of a warrior alone. And God says, remove all your warrior garment. Why are you on the shorts of a runner, an athlete? God, I thought I'm going to be fighting all my life. And then there are times you would come for training. And the only training you will receive is how to keep things. And you'll be wondering God I should be fighting there are many people because you do not know this dynamism you have refused to attend certain classes in the spirit listen carefully and it is about to become catastrophe in your life a mighty warrior is only relevant when he is in the battlefield when a warrior gets to an a, a stadium to run that warrior can be a disaster because the requirement for being a good athlete is speed, agility, not just, the, not just being a warrior. 
Are we together? So this upfront is a message for you. Respect and discern and believe the various forms of spiritual training that God is subjecting you to. Are we together? There are some of you, when you see God training others as athletes, you want to leave the battleground and just go and change your regalia. And God is saying, remain there. The amount of time it takes to train a military officer is not the same amount of time it takes someone to run. Is that true? There are people without any training, they could run and win. But it's impossible to shoot and shoot excellently without a training. There are people who naturally, they can keep secrets. They can stomach things and keep it there. But there are people who have to be trained. My call for you tonight, listen to me. These three groups of people are scattered within this congregation this night. As you are listening to me, although everybody is listening to the same thing, it is not the same thing the Holy Ghost is doing. There are some people through this teaching, you are receiving the training of a warrior. Make sure you discern. There are people you are receiving the training of an athlete. There are people you are receiving a training of one who needs to know how to protect what is given to him. God, by this training, week in, week out, for some of you, you have not even started the training of a warrior. He decided to start with you on how to keep. So every time you see people praying the prayer of a warrior, you laugh because the level of your own training is just to protect you. Don't worry, keep the class going. Eventually. So don't be surprised. God has never told you to fast for 40 days. He has never told you to pray. It doesn't mean he won't say it. You are still in another training that does not necessitate those equipments. You will get to a point in life for some of you, the reason why God did not start with the training of a warrior is because you had the privilege of being close to a warrior. So there are battles you didn't need to fight. Somebody else's victory, you are still enjoying it. But make no mistakes about it. There is a battle with your name on it. I have fought. I have finished. I have kept. If you fight alone, your race is incomplete. Have you finished? If you finished alone, your race is not complete. These three things must be captured in your life and your destiny. I have fought. I have finished. I have kept. Some people have fought. They even finished. But when they got to the finish line, they didn't find their soul again. What shall it profit a man? In, in the process of running, they left the major things in life, looking for money, looking for fame, and they lost their soul. Other people lost their bishopric at the end of their life when God showed them the blueprint of their destiny. They were told that they were supposed to be mighty apostles and revivalists, but they found out that they ended up being civil servants till they finished. They lost a bishopric. He says, I have kept the faith. Are we together? So when you come to church, don't come to listen to what you want. Come to listen to what, uh, listen for the things that are needed. And don't be surprised when God suddenly switches in his training with you and becomes unusually strict. He did not change. His is another kind of training he's given you. And don't stop somebody from being trained as a warrior just because you are being trained as an athlete because there are times that you can see you can be be trained as an athlete or one who will keep secrets and you look at the rigorous training of a military man you can go to him and say no god does not train like this my own god only trains you on how to keep things that's a dangerous theology because everybody in his lifetime you must be trained to fight. You must be trained to finish. You must be trained to keep. Turn it into a prayer request. I obtain grace, oh God. The grace to submit to the training that builds me to fight. I obtain grace. Someone is praying. To submit to the training that empowers me to finish. I obtain grace to submit to the training that helps me to keep and preserve my bishopric.
the mandates given to me in my life and destiny go ahead and pray are you praying No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed. No eye has seen, said. No ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed. No ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your word till Christ. One more time. No I has sin said. No ear has heard what God has prepared for me. formed in me till your glory is formed in me your wisdom be formed in me so I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me that's why you are here it's a training for some of you here, find strength. You are going through the training of a warrior. The nature of the job description of your destiny does not just, you are not just going to be keeping your bishopric. There are battles to fights that you have no idea of and you have to be trained. Like the mighty men of David, the Bible says those men became mighty. One of them stood in one position and fought 800 people, slew them with the sword and the sword would not leave his hand. Someone trained him. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. Yes, I submit to your work Till Christ be You can miss certain classes in the highest institution of learning and you can read up during exam. There are times you may be maybe sick or you may be busy or just careless and you may not attend certain lectures. When you hear that is the time for an exam, there's what we call tutorial. And you can sit down and in three hours summarize the lecture but in the school of destiny any class you miss even if it's after 30 years you must write that exam again you can get anointing and miss character 101 character 201 and after 30 years the absence of character 201 even though you have anointing will reduce you back you have to sit down and pass that exams. You can study anointing 101 and forget finance 501 and say it does not matter. The cry of your children, the cry of your wife, are we together? The cry of everything around you will bring you back to that school. Listen, it is true that no knowledge is a waste. But every time is not conducive to learn everything. Imagine a woman of 55 years wearing 
um, a short, you know, skirt and blouse, this thing that they wear in primary school, and you sit down in the midst, those students are young, their minds are still alive. A woman of 55 years in primary school, congratulations for her courage, but she will most likely keep getting zero in everything because she will be sleeping when other students are alive. And it is not wrong. If she did what she should do, she should be sleeping correctly at that time. Listen, there are some of you, I don't mean to scare you, but you came to know Jesus Christ late. There are some of you, your family had altars you don't have any leverage of godliness to give you an edge in life some of you right now what you are learning is not even for your destiny yet what you are learning is to correct the rubbish that you met before you now start stabilizing for your destiny so when somebody whose father is a missionary whose mother is a prayer warrior whose wife is an intercessor whose first son is a prophet can he can miss service for three weeks they have these systems of advantage but for you is witches and wizards all kinds of demonic people around you and you also join to miss the service till Christ be formed in me let me tell you in this kingdom the king's business requires haste are we together you've heard me say it takes time to know God you know let me tell you sincerely when I see the kind of attention and the laxity sometimes that believers show towards the things of God, there are times that people come to church, a message is preaching like this, and they are browsing, they are just gisting and laughing and saying, in fact, I'm just, I'm enjoying myself, honestly, this place, what you said is correct, and they are not learning anything. When you come to the house of God and the word comes, anything that distracts you, find out what the bible says is the name of that thing it is the devil it doesn't matter whether it comes as whatever five minutes of accurate training being taught the word of god will give you the tools for some of you you are almost done with your training of a warrior maybe what you are receiving tonight is the helmet and you can stand and heaven can clap for you and say we can go to the next training some of you, the day we gave the sword, you were not there. You didn't come to church and you were careless about it. So you are a warrior without a sword. Because the day the training that gives you the sword is there, you were not there. And you didn't care to listen. There are some of you, as you are like this, you are already in the battleground, but you are naked from head to toe. You need to listen to the things that will equip you fast. Because the, the, the war sound is about to start and it does not care whether you are prepared or not. The Bible says there were cries in Rama. The little children were innocent but they were, did not have the training of military people. And you would think life would spare them because they were children. They all died. Man of God. Could it be that the teaching you are about to hear tonight is what you need for this season in the ministry for someone you are watching online and God is already speaking to you you have learned how to fight but you've not learned how to finish be careful so that you do not clap for yourself too long you can fight but unfortunately if the exam that is set before you requires an athlete you are in trouble Students are allowed to read everything. Our school of ministry students wrote their exams, I think it was last week or so, a week before last. And they were taught across a number of courses. They will not be told what question will come out. Are we together? The student can have an idea, but as a good student, you read everything. When you get to the exam hall, because you have read and you are vast, is that true? When they ask questions across several subjects, you can respond. But there are students who just guess where they want and just read. And then they get to the exam hall, question one to five. None of it was what they read. Did they read? Yes. Did they read well? No. I'm preparing for destiny. I agree. But let me see what you are doing. For 10 years, all you have been doing is focusing on battle. 
you will be surprised at the fight you want to fight God has put you in a ministry where that grace will do that fight for you and by the time you'll be having your own fight you should have used the time to learn how to run so that when that battle comes your training plus the training there will give you a leverage and you simply move listen in the name of Jesus I pray for you every dimension of training you need in your life you will not lose you will submit yourself and you will learn you will be thoroughly trained some of you have gone through the training of a warrior you have gone through the training of an athlete but you have not gone through the training you have not learned the dynamics of how to keep what is given to you until the end hmm. help us Holy Spirit that's not my message oh. that's 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 a charge I just shared with you my devotion <laughs> hallelujah Now let's go to the teaching wherever we stop we'll pray I know we'll finish in Jesus name Amen. the roadmap to a triumphant destiny the roadmap to a triumphant destiny tonight's teaching is very powerful and truly it will change your life the roadmap to a triumphant destiny hallelujah before the coming of uber and bolt people had to make do with cabs you would take a cab from one location to the other and the major trouble with that pattern of transportation was that many times the driver would have to know the location where you are exactly by head and would have to know where he needs to take you all and there are times where both the person going and the person driving don't even know where they are know where they are going are we together and so it was a serious challenge there are people who would spend over 30 minutes on a journey of 10 minutes simply because there was no accurate system of knowing the place and the advantage of you know businesses like uber and bold they did not give you a car necessarily they didn't even give you the ability to learn how to drive they introduced the GPS system to make it available are we together now so that it can become a bridge that it is possible that even though by memory you may not know where your passenger or your whoever it is that that is making the order you may not know where that person needs to go but there is a device that can help connect you from where you are to where you need to be or where that person needs to be and that simple thing that was introduced has now made people to prefer that pattern of transporting themselves to a regular cab it's incredible how just introducing a system that provides a roadmap changed the dynamics of people's appetite as far as patronizing the transport business is concerned are we together and so you see that it is not in, it is not enough to know that you have a great life and a great destiny it's important for you to know that a road map is required there has to be a road map that guides you from where you are to the place that you need to be failure to have a road map will make you lose destiny and end up in shame and end up with regrets Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 18 and 19 the Bible very clearly tells us that every believer in Christ because in Christ we are the justified we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and the Bible tells us that in Christ and by reason of the provisions of redemption our path it says is as the shining light that shineth more and more you've heard me say more and more is the heritage of the saints are we together the Bible has designed a destiny or God himself has designed and revealed through scripture the more and more destiny 
for the believer it says it shines more and more unto the perfect day in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 it says I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end so there is an expected end in fact some versions will say a future and a hope there is a future in Christ there is a future for your destiny are we still together however Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 popular scripture Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 I hope we're still together it says the labor of the foolish weary at every one of them why because he knoweth not how to go to the city remember our uber example the man is not foolish as an insult he's foolish because he focused on the city but he did not focus on the road map the problem was not knowing that there is a city the problem was knowing how to go to the city knowing that you have a great destiny in christ is a good information but that alone would not help you actualize your prophetic destiny in Christ. Are we together? So we have a great destiny. Every one of us in Christ, a prophetic destiny. Regardless the level and the area God would want to use you, whether in ministry, in business, in government, in family, it does not matter. We have a great destiny in Christ. The Bible says those he foreknew, he predestined, are we together? He called, he justified, and he glorified. The end of the journey is your glorification. Now, let me present to you a road map. If you follow the road map that I'm about to show you tonight, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture that you will arrive at a triumphant destiny a destiny that is full of beauty and color that god will be so greatly glorified in your life and all through your lifetime if that is you shout a loud amen yeah. daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 very popular scripture but let's see what god has to teach us about this scripture today and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries the b part is my verse of emphasis but the people that do know their god shall be strong and shall do exploits let's read the b part together from the word but ready one to read but the people that do know their god uh-huh shall be strong and shall do exploits so this promise is for people not animals not birds not inanimate things as we know it says the people that do know their God they shall be strong and shall do exploits now in biblical exegesis please listen carefully theologically speaking now when you are drawing forth light from Scripture there are rules that you follow. Number one is that in, in understanding scripture, the first approach is to treat it literally. Are we together? Because more than a prophetic book or in addition to being a prophetic book, the Bible is a compendium that contains literature. The Bible is an archaeological material. The Bible is also a historical material. Are we together? And not everything in the Bible is prophetic at plain sight there are some things that mean exactly what they say so in approaching scripture your first approach should be to try to interpret it directly verbatim as it is written if it does not make scriptural and natural sense then you would need what the bible calls the presence of two or three witnesses you would have to bring other scriptures that express the same thought so that you can now look at it contextually and now find out if it will make sense by combining other scriptures and then looking at the verses before or after if it still does not make the kind of sense you want then at that point you will have to buy into the wisdom of the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of revelation are we together to draw out the prophetic meaning 
if you were asked to interpret the dream that Pharaoh had, you most likely will fail. Because I am shocked at the interpretation that Joseph gave over that dream. Are we together? That cows, fat cows, eat lean cows. How in the world does a cow mean time? How in the world does an ear of corn mean time? Uh, my first interpretation to that dream will be Pharaoh, you are under attack. This is witchcraft. Abundance is eating poverty. That's going to be my interpretation. I'm being honest with you. And yet, Pharaoh is saying there's nothing witchcraft there. This is simply the course of time happening. So there are things that when you look at it physically, it does not make sense. But now when you approach it from a prophetic dimension, it will now make sense. Are we together? Back to this scripture. Now you will understand why I said everything I said. No, no, no. Not Exodus 40. Let's do Daniel 11 again. So it says, but the people that do know their God. Now there is a contextual meaning for this. You have to read the verses before and after. And then you fit it within the context that it was used. But because the Bible is also a prophetic book. Are we together? You can still draw forth a very supernatural lesson from it. That has nothing to do with the context as discussed. I think this is the mistake that most people have. Sometimes theologians and people who submit themselves to learning scripture when they see that men and women of god draw out prophetic meanings from certain scripture they say it is wrong no you don't have a right to say it is wrong it's a prophetic book it is only that in order of priority there is a contextual meaning are we together and if you focus on the prophetic meaning and lose the contextual meaning then you would not have done justice to that scripture but if you understand the contextual meaning you have the right based on the prophetic character of scripture to derive a prophetic meaning from it are we together i'm teaching you this so that when you are listening to the message of a man of god and you hear him say something else about his scripture whereas based on maybe a higher level of study you see that mm -mm, from a contextual standpoint that person failed but god provided that prophetic meaning will still be able to reveal something about the character of the kingdom. The Spirit of God will still honor it. Only that when you are mentoring people to be of stature and maturity, and you are teaching them the word, then you will need to be able to teach them to understand from a theological and a contextual standpoint, while still holding on to that prophetic meaning. So you know that this is actually what the Bible was saying. However, I can still use it to relate to this. Are we together now? Now I want to give the interpretation for that verse. Daniel 11. That really is our key verse of study tonight. The Bible starts by giving us three keys that represent the major roadmaps and the junctions to our destiny. Number one, the Bible starts with the statement, know their God. Knowledge. Mark the word know. The second word that I want us to pay attention to is the word be. And then the third word I want us to pay attention to is the word do. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen carefully. But the people that do know shall be and shall do. Are we together? Forget what else they know and what else will happen. The people that do know shall be and do. Now, let me read it for you. Are you ready? Please look up. The only people that do are those who be and those who be are those who know the only people who can do exploits are those who be strong and the only people who can be strong are the people who know let's discuss these three words the first is the word no no talks of knowledge be talks of transformation do talks of action 
The Bible defines for us the prophetic roadmap to a triumphant destiny. That if these three phases of approaching life and destiny is not captured, you will never be able to actualize your prophetic destiny. Knowledge, transformation, and action. But they are not as cheap and empty as they sound. Let's explore by the Spirit. What does it mean and what does it imply to know? The Bible immediately tells us that actualizing destiny is knowledge dependent. Knowledge dependent. More than desire dependent. You can have desire, but until and unless you have the requisite kind and level of knowledge that your destiny demands, you may never actualize a great destiny. Are we together? What is the implication of knowing or knowledge? Number one, for you to know anything at all in life, especially that which relates to God and your destiny, number one, you must be meek enough to receive. That is the first implication of knowing. It is mandatory that for knowing to be a reality in your life, you must be meek enough to receive. James chapter 1 and verse 21. We're discussing knowing now and the implication. James 1, 21. It says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness. Someone say with meekness. One more time, please. Say with meekness. With meekness, the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. That means the realm of knowing is only for people who are meek. The moment you do not have the quality of meekness, knowing will never be a possibility with you. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, popular scripture. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. He's saying, listen, I know the value of the word of God. I know the value in this sense of spiritual knowledge. It is able to give you an inheritance to build you up capacity and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. There are many people who cannot arrive at the place of destiny because they do not know. And knowing is far from them because there is no meekness at heart. Is someone learning? What else does it mean to know? Or what does it take to get to the realm of knowing? Number two, for you to be a knowledgeable person, you must master the art of asking questions please write it down dr. Murdoch would say a question is the seed for an answer that means you are not authorized for an answer until you can ask a question are we together most people do not know in life because they do not know how to ask questions questions are very powerful one day, one of the fathers of faith in this nation was talking to me and he was teaching me the power of questions. And he said, Apostle, always ask questions. Always ask questions. Always ask questions. The next time we spoke, he said the same thing again. He said, always ask questions. I wrote it down. And I made up my mind. Do you know, those who know how to ask questions never stay in the same position for long. Are, you, are we listening now? But don't assume you know how to ask questions. Matthew chapter 7, 7 and 8. It says, ask and you shall receive. 7 and 8. Ask and you shall receive and it shall be given unto you. That means if it is not given unto you, it's because you did not ask. Is that true? Seek and you shall find, it says. 
knock and it shall be opened unto you let's read verse 8 together one to read for everyone that asketh receive it just stop there so the blessing of receiving from asking is for everyone everyone regardless gender regardless race regardless whatever your orientation the moment you are someone who can ask you immediately become a receiver the gift of information the gift of access to knowledge most people do not know how to ask james chapter 4 and verse 2 apostle james was teaching us again and he made a very profound statement he said ye lost and have not ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain james 4 2 he says ye fight and war and ye have not simply because ye ask not there are many people who are grounded and stagnated in life simply because they have not mastered the art of asking questions let me tell you um, my definition of what it means to ask I'll give you three definitions number one to ask means to request information or to request for an answer by saying or writing that's the first thing it means if you want to ask or if you are asking you are requesting for an information or you are requesting for an answer either by verbalizing it or by writing it my first definition of asking the second definition of asking means to invite into or to allow into your space that means when you ask you are giving permission for someone or something to come into your space powerful when you ask it means you are authorizing that information that realm of reality to come freely into your space number three asking means to inquire the price of or the cost of if you are asking it also means you want to know the cost implication of that which you want to have so there are many people who ask but all they are doing is just making requests they have not sat down to count the cost you're counting the cost the cost dimension of life is also asking is God helping us this is what it means to know the people that do know their God in order to know you must be meek enough to receive number two you must master the art of asking questions how is how does this happen how does this happen the man who came to share the testimony one of those those men that came from the east i was struck by what he said his honesty to admit that was the part of the testimony that blessed me many of you didn't hear so much only the amount that the chief would collect and you were clapping i'm joking are we together but I listened to something that he said he said I've been in the faith for a while but he was honest enough to admit that the things that I had were not producing for me there was a man who made that kind of confession in the Bible called Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar when he saw what happened to the three Hebrew boys he was honest and open and said blessed be the God of Daniel or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are we together now? And he wrote a decree. He was not ashamed to acknowledge. Listen, when your way is not working, stop trying. Provided there are results happening, you must humble yourself. This thing I'm doing, I've been in Abuja for 10 years, 15 years. I don't even have a plot of land now don't just credit everything I, I i minister deliverance for people but listen we're not stupid people it is not everything that is just demons because there is a dimension of deliverance that is simply a transfer of responsibility there are many people who don't want to take responsibility over their lives adam still missed it in the garden of eden there were no causes 
there was no demon his mother he didn't even have a mother to say there's anything foundation there was no foundation from mother and father in the garden of eden and yet he still failed are we together You must be willing to ask my way is not working I humble myself I've been doing ministry but there is no growth there is no increase when I teach my people even when I joke they don't laugh they are always angry and frowning at me I think the people are wicked no your view of them is that they are wicked Jesus said come and learn of me that means there is something you don't know he has vetted you and said come and learn come and learn someone you need to in your mind prophesy to yourself that i need to learn there are things i do not know are we together what is the implication what does it take to know remember we're dealing with three words have i lost you what does it take to know number three in order to gain knowledge that translates to your advancement you must be willing to sacrifice your time, your energy, your resources to buy the truth. When the Bible says the people that do know, it takes a lot to be in the place of knowledge. You must be willing to sacrifice your time, your energy, your resources to buy the truth. Matthew 13, 14, Matthew 13 from verse 44 to 46. Hear what the Bible says. I love Jesus. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. Is that in your Bible? It says, the which a man had found, he hide it, and for joy he goeth and selleth all that he has and buy the field. Look at this kind of man. He found treasure, and with respect to that treasure, nothing else that he had mattered again he could sell anything to buy it next verse again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls 46 who when he had found one pearl of great price he went and sold all that he had and bought it apostle where do i get the money to buy the truth you get it by selling the inferior truths are we together the money it takes to buy the truth comes by selling what else is not the truth there is a transaction that happens nobody has the capital to buy the truth by default get my message I preached it in um, Takorad in Ghana buy the truth you can get it on Koinonia Global please listen to it very carefully I teach there that there are five currencies that we use to buy the truth Currency number one is meekness. Meekness and humility is the first currency we use to buy the truth. Are we together? The second currency we use to buy the truth with is honor. Another currency we use to buy the truth is hunger. When you do not have the currency of hunger, you cannot buy the truth. Are we learning the Bible tells us that a man found goodly pearls and he sold everything to have more capital and he now bought what he considered his treasure let me tell you this please look up most people are not in the place of knowledge because they are unwilling to sacrifice their time they are unwilling to sacrifice energy and to sacrifice their resources with all due respect to everyone here, I am amazed and humbled at the amount of international guests that come in every week from around the world. You would think it's a conference that is happening all the time. There are people who would travel as far as Australia, US, to come to Koinonia for a normal service. We're not even talking about, of course, every service is supernatural, but not a dedicated service to minister to people and some of these people you will be surprised they would come down to Abuja 
and some of them will still travel to follow some of the ministrations within the and you are wondering couldn't they just sit down and follow online there's something they are looking for are we together and yet there are people who don't even stay they stay a two three minutes distance they just look through their window and once they see someone falling they say, wow ah, man is powerful though and then they go back and I'm not being sarcastic please but you look at the life of that person there is nothing that that has beauty and color can I tell you the truth a hospital does not go around looking for patients if you are sick you are the, no matter how sick you are even if you cannot walk you must find somebody who picks you to the hospital a hospital just keeps being equipped but it will never go around. I don't know any hospital that lives from the foundation going around to every home. We live in a generation where we want truth and knowledge at our terms. Mm -mm. It's the thinking of mediocres. When you truly desire knowledge, you seek and you pursue it with everything within you. Hallelujah. Mm. Very, very powerful. You must be willing to sacrifice your time, your resources to buy it. Proverbs chapter 2 from verse 1. Proverbs chapter 2, please. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandment with thee, uh -huh, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. 3. It says, yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lifted up thy voice for understanding reading to 6 verse 4 if thou seekest her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God for the Lord giveth wisdom but he doesn't give everybody he gives those who seek passionately and out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding to who to the one who is seeking as silver you are my strength when I am weak you are the treasure that I seek you are my only no I'm seeking you as a precious joy Not to give up, I'll be a fool You are my own Can I tell you? Respectfully speaking, there are people who are not passionate about anything There is nothing in their lives that can keep them awake in the night There is nothing in their life that can make them forget food there is nothing in their life that can make time pass without them being you will not be great that way there has to be something in your life that keeps you awake jesus said my meat my satisfaction comes from doing and finishing the will of him that has sent me are we together there are many people who are very passive if you are passing and you see something on tv you just watch oh wow i just learned something now but they never pursue knowledge. The people that do know are the people that seek with meekness. The people that do know are the people who are willing to ask questions and never stop till they find answers. The people that do know are the people who are willing to sacrifice their time, their energy, and their resources to buy the truth number four the people that do know are there are the people who have the power to value and to retain superior knowledge that is the fourth price it takes to be in the realm of those who know you must have the power to value and to retain superior knowledge value and retain superior knowledge there are many many people who even by the mercies of god they encounter valuable knowledge but they have not mastered the art of placing value on and retaining knowledge that is useful the same matthew 13 let's look at 47 and 48 
Matthew 13, 47 and 48. Please look up. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind. Everybody say every kind. Usually, this is truly the product of passion. When you pursue knowledge with passion, you will gather every kind. Useful knowledge, useless knowledge, knowledge that is structured, knowledge that is scattered. Your assignment is in verse 48. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels and cast the bad away. Are we Bible students? Sometimes you will not have the luxury of having refined knowledge. This is where the gift of pastors who are according to the heart of God comes in. Are we together now? This is why you must value what you are receiving here and any other place when you find a man of God who has walked with the Spirit through pain, through tears, through study and experience to filter out. This is what we do before we come to church. Matthew 13, 48. You, you cannot believe the amount of research and study and prayer and deep thought and contemplation that comes into bringing one message. What you receive is the filtered, finished version. But I'm telling you, classically speaking, if you want knowledge and you pursue knowledge, please go to verse 47. Don't forget it. You are going to gather, media help us 47, you are going to gather every kind. There are times where I'm researching maybe on the Holy Spirit and then I'm studying and my goodness, you will see some videos with some kind of demonic occultic information. It's part of the price of seeking. If you seek, you will find. Are we together? Some of you want to study about finances and you will meet all kinds of nonsense that you, it is don't be don't be angry in the midst of all that rubbish ask those who mine have you seen people who mine gold it's not pure refined gold that just comes and you put it in your pocket and go and sell it no there is nothing you mine from the earth that comes pure when you mine it from the earth you now sit down 48 when you sit down then you gather. Do you know it takes time and sacrifice? Okay, this one I found now. Let me read this article they wrote on the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit is a woman with this nonsense. And you throw it away. And you don't feel bad. Sometimes you spend the whole day buying a book. And midway, you have to read half of the book to know it is wrong. Are we together? The cover is excellent. It starts with a powerful scripture. It's halfway. The Holy Ghost will say, no, stay. Holy Spirit, you would have just told me from the bookshop that this thing is going to waste my time. Truly, we live in a generation that does not respect knowledge. The sacrifice of knowledge. Are we together? So, you must be willing to value knowledge. Proverbs chapter 4. Let me show you something. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. Proverbs 4, 20. My son, we're reading from verse 20 to 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Uh -huh. Let them not depart from your eyes. So they can depart from your eyes. And keep them in the midst of your heart. 22. They are life to those who find them. Not those who want them. Not those who want them, those who find them. And health to their flesh. Can I tell you the truth? When people do not pay the price to retain knowledge, this is why this generation has no excuse to fail. Because technology has made retention possible. Are we together? There was a time where if a man says something and quotes a scripture, that is the scripture tied to your next level. If you didn't hear it, sorry for you. You have to either buy the tape or come next year for that conference. But now you can go back. You know you are a student of knowledge when a 15 minutes message takes three hours to finish. 
because for every one or two minutes you are stopping has that happened to you a message of one hour you hold on with your laptop or ipad you come back later and on again the fire was too much you calm down you are not in a rush god what are you saying and light will come out of that knowledge revelation i've told you is not just knowledge knowledge is important but revelation is understanding mixed with knowledge are we learning the people that do know a quick recap are the people that number one must be meek enough to receive that's what it takes to know the people that do know are number two the people who master the art of asking questions and don't stop the people that do know number three are people who are willing to sacrifice their time their energy their resources to buy the truth number four the people who know are the people who place value on knowledge and have sustained the ability to retain superior knowledge hallelujah i can tell you retaining knowledge is not the issue of being dull or intelligent is the issue of being serious with your destiny mm. there are people who cannot tell you last week's message they don't even remember honestly frankly speaking sometimes your mind can play games you can forget but they can't even remember any point no ought not to be so the people who know that means if you want an excelling destiny please listen carefully whether in ministry whether in whatever it is it was bishop oyedeko who taught us that when they were about to build covenant university he said he researched a number of world-renowned universities there were other universities already but he, he paid the price to study them put up a panel that understudied it are we together and then at the end of it he came to a conclusion that covenant university he wanted it to become the new generation harvard now there's landmark and they are all making tremendous contributions are we together Many years ago, I was in Afeba Balolo University to preach. And my goodness, when I got to hear about the standard and some of the things happening there, and that that man was then at that time, I think he was in his 80s now, I don't know, or maybe 80s, I don't know how old he is now. And his passion, he would still come to the office and sit down and coordinate all kinds of things. I had to tell myself, anybody that says it's too much, think again. Some of us are already young, 25, and they tell you, ah, you are tired, you have tried. Nothing, you are not impacting anything. You have not utilized even 10% of the, the, the mental potential that the Spirit of God gave you. Please challenge yourself in the name of Jesus that you will go for structured knowledge and don't stop. A young man who is sleeping 12 hours, you are in the first level of your life. You will wake up towards the last level of your life. When other people are sleeping, trouble will keep you awake. It's not a cause. It's because you have not prepared your way before the Lord. Go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. Most of the time, people used to live a fake life would have been used in getting knowledge that produces what is genuine. Are we together? The time it takes to hide around cars and snap and say it's your car. The time it takes to sit down in an office and say you were in London. All that time is the same time you can settle down and, and study in your one room. Even with a candle. Shabalakatos. Lord, I know that in the name of Jesus, things will not remain like this. And the spirit of grace is honoring your sincerity and your investment. But the people that do know. Are we together? Very quickly, let's go to the second word. B. The people that do know their God. Knowledge, as powerful as it is, is not enough. Knowledge must translate to transformation. Now, there are many people who know. They've paid the price to know in terms of awareness. But they are shocked that what they know is the truth. And yet it has not produced in their life. 
Knowing and doing will cause you trouble. Knowledge must become transformation before you take action. Are we together? Please give it to us. There are, you know, many years ago, I was studying particularly about finances. I, I wanted to make sure that I had a destiny of beauty and color financially. And every time I read the books that people wrote about finances, they didn't write the businesses that they were doing. They would just write things like character, think well, value relationships. I said, these guys are liars. What are you doing that is bringing you money? That's all I want to know, how foolish I was. They were focused on my becoming. I was focused on doing. Many of you have been doing for years because when you do what you have not become, life will see, it. there will be a red card there that will be shown you. You are doing something illegal. Are we together? Be strong. Let's look at the word be. The word be there talks of transformation. What does it mean to be transformed? To change states, spiritually, mentally. What does it take? The people who are transformed, the people who become, are those that, number one, those who recognize that you are not yet your best version. The only people who contend for transformation are those who admit, thank God for what I am and where I am, but this is not the best version of me. That there is more. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 12. Those who will contend for transformation beyond the realm of knowledge are those who will recognize and acknowledge that you are not yet your best version. I tell myself that all the time. Joshua Selman, thank God for how far God has brought you. Thank God for everything God is using people to say across the globe. But be sure that you are not yet your best version. There are still virgin heights and virgin versions of me that are still calling me to come up higher. Virgin levels of power. Virgin levels of understanding and illumination. Sometimes the demon that stops your progress is your current level. It's not an attack from the realm of the spirit. Where you are can greatly stop where you need to be. Philippians 3.12 Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. This is Paul. You have to understand the man who is speaking here. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Even without meeting Jesus, he was not a, he was not a non-entity. Paul was a scribe. He was a doctor of the law. Intelligence per excellence. Acknowledged by God. Acknowledged by men, even the enemies of the cross. They acknowledge his intelligence and then he encountered Jesus directly and then he spent 18 years in the wilderness of Arabia under all kinds of training that's the man who is talking not that I've already attained it's like a professor emeritus saying I don't know much he's talking to his students so I don't know much a professor who has been a professor for 20 years a foremost researcher one of the few authorities across the globe and they say professor what do you have to tell us and he says well my dear people I can only attempt I don't know much ah. who now marks the script when every other professor who was there was accredited by that one man and yet he's telling you he does not know much listen those who contend for transformation are those who always know that everything I am now is only for now. There is still more. Please give us that scripture. Let's finish it up. Is someone learning tonight? It says, either we're already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus. 13. We're reading to 14. Brethren, I count not myself. You count me to have apprehended. You call me Paul the learned, Paul the anointed, Paul the great. But I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. He didn't say forgetting the bad things that are behind. I know you received an award in January, congratulations, but it's over. You will never receive an award for that realm again. So you drop it, pat yourself at the back 
and after that you move forward can I tell you forward thinkers are people who they rejoice at their current level of success but they do not stop there they move forward they move higher but this one thing I do forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before 14 I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus listen those who become are those who never settle they know that there is always a better and greater version in this man standing before you is still a better man of God in this man standing before you is still the potential for a more anointed man thank God for the bodies that were healed what of the ones that were not healed yet are you saying God cannot touch them God is true the problem is the limitation of the vessels we have not yet contended for that level you must be honest and sincere and strict with yourself champions don't let their tears spare the discipline of pressing forward when people commend me on what God is doing here in the ministry and across the globe I thank them but I know that um, no 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 we th th this is you you always hear me say this is a step out of the cave never get to a point in your life where you say is there anything else you are dead already even in heaven John was caught up in heaven in the spirit and when he was in heaven he wrote the letters to the seven churches and he still had a voice that said come up hither in other words in heaven still come higher for someone God is already speaking to you the version of you of 2019 is still the version of you today because you have not seen anything to challenge you higher man of God there are still grounds believe me man of God there are still realms of power this is why pride is dangerous because pride is a full stop in your life where you should put a comma hallelujah no matter how powerful a meeting is if you ask me how was the meeting I would just say fine that answers it oh boy so what should else should I say fine Ten people got up from the wheelchair out of how many we have to verify how many people were on wheelchair in the city where you came versus the number we are grateful but it should not sponsor mediocrity for someone God is challenging you right now stop celebrating any arrival even when you have not started there is still there are many heights stretch yourself Transformation requires a recognition that you are not yet your best version, that there is more. Number two, those who become, be, those who are transformed, are we together? Are those who realize and recognize that changing, listen carefully, for you to be transformed, it will demand you changing or upgrading your references and your models. You can never be transformed until you sustain the courage to change your models and change your references. For some of you, the reason why you are where you are is that the reference you are using is too small, is too low. Transformation cannot happen until you have a superior reference, a superior model. Someone who is called into the educational sector, for instance, by the time that person has a degree and his reference is a professor and one who has PhDs and DSCs like a thermometer, by the time you're a master's holder, that is, that is, that is, um, that is commendable. But because your model is high, even when you have PhD, it looks like you are just having a school living certificate because the reference is high. Are we together? If you are a man of God and your reference is very high, your model is high, even when you are doing exceptional things based on the context of your environment, because your bar is high, not from a competitive standpoint. This is, we are talking about someone who wants to maximize destiny. 
There are many people, if they were Jesus, they will not need to die again. After that triumphant entry, straight, they will go to heaven. That you climb that donkey, that's the end. From that donkey straight, you will leave a mess under. No apostles train, no nothing. The mission would have died within one year. But Jesus did a thorough work, not distracted by his results. He would finish a powerful crusade and sit down with one woman and be talking as if he's not the same person who raised the dead and never make reference to what he did before. He would not talk to her and say, Madam, I'm giving you 10 minutes and you're wasting my time. Do you know what happened to Lazarus? You are playing with me. You've not heard about me. Look at this. When Jesus resurrected, you thought that you would take the time to enjoy and celebrate. Resurrection is not a small thing. You know what happened in hell. As soon as he got up, he said, listen, I'm here for 40 more days. We are behind in our lectures. All of you come together. Oh, you are the one, you are risen, I'm risen. You've seen me, that's all right, sit down. Let's get to work. 40 days, non-stop. Afterwards, he told them, now I can go. When you get to the world of champions, celebration is minimal. Only enough to motivate you and give God glory. And then you fire on. Are we together? So you must change your references. I've taught you here that transformation is difficult without a reference. You cannot become nothing. You need to become something exact. My question is what or who is your reference? If your reference, respectfully speaking, is a mediocre. You see, there are references that when you put, even if you don't go high, you will still feel comfortable. Watch this. Let me go down just for sake of explanation. If, sorry for those who may not be able to see me, but if this is my reference, watch this, this first step, this is my reference. Do I need to jump seriously to get there? Even if it's by mistake, I can stumble there. But can you stumble here by mistake? So while you are here, those who are here are clapping for you and say, what else is left? You must be able to focus. And then you climb higher. And those who are down are saying, this is too much. And what kind of anointing are you looking for? Whereas there are results that only those who are standing here can produce. Is someone learning now? You must change your references. You must change your models. Upgrade your references. Upgrade your models. What kind of church do you want to produce? What kind and quality of believers do you want to produce? Are we together? What do you want the testimony of the average believer under your care to look or sound like? It's not just having a crowd of people. You must be interested in quality. Is someone learning number three what is the implication and what does it take to be what does it take to be transformed are you ready those who become and those who are transformed are those who are willing to give up age-long limiting unscriptural and anti-destiny beliefs those who contend for transformation are those who are willing to give up age-long limiting unscriptural and anti-destiny beliefs just because a mindset has been there for a long time does not mean it is correct africa we need to trust god for grace we are people of grace and potential. Now, let me tell you, when I talk of dropping wrong mindsets, I'm not respectfully speaking. I don't necessarily mean picking Western mindsets. I mean picking scriptural mindsets. You can drop an African mindset and pick a Western mindset and you are still in the same place spiritually. So I don't mean getting a more technological error. That's not what I'm teaching. Africa's error may be crude. Then you now pick and advance a technological error. It's still error. Are we together? You will never contend for transformation 
until you are willing to give up age long limiting unscriptural and anti-destiny beliefs let me confess to you up front that this is very very hard because we usually are emotionally connected to our mindsets if no matter how wrong it is there is an emotional affinity you have towards your mindset and stripping yourself of that mindset to embrace a new scriptural and superior belief system is almost like asking you to remove your clothes and stand naked there are people who would rather die than to contend for scriptural transformation respectfully speaking we come there are six geopolitical zones within nigeria and i submit to you that every geopolitical zone has its blessing and advantage territorially speaking but every geopolitical zone has its limitation programmed by demon spirits territorially if you want to rise and do much for the kingdom you have to obtain grace from god to put a superior reference that is higher than your territory the, the scripture God gave me that delivered me from the limitation of my territory was John 1, 6 and 7. There was a man sent from God. That thing changed my life. Sent from God. That means the physical point of my arrival is not really the basis for my victory. It is where I came from. I never came from heaven. I was sent. He didn't say there was a man who came from God. That means my arrival was the conclusion of an intelligent discussion between divinity. They saw the space that my relevance can produce as far as kingdom come. I was sent with intention. When I arrived at earth, my parents gave me a name. Lovely name, by the way. May God bless them. They are watching. Next verse, verse 7. The same came for a witness. So it tells you immediately the basis of your victory. He that cometh from above, he says, is above all. And I made up my mind that I refuse to be limited by the thinking and the influences that are associated with my region. No. Is someone learning? A young lady was crying and complaining to her mom about life and she just felt that life was unfair and she was shouting and yelling at the mom and the mom didn't say a word the mom just went in front of a, a gas cooker a four four burner the one that has four compartments and the mom put three three pots and put water on them while the lady was yelling mommy are you hearing me life is unfair and in one of the pots that was boiling, she put an egg, e -double G. In one of the pots that was boiling there, she put coffee. Are we together? And then in one of the pots, I can't remember again what she put there. Rat? Carrots, thank you. Are we together? And she allowed it for a few, for a few maybe some time and then she called the young lady and opened the pots and said tell me what you see and she found out that number one her observation was there was fire under the pot on all all three pots so they went through the same situation of heat are we together but for the egg that was fragile and could just you know fall to the ground and you would lose it it had now become hard and strong you could even peel the back and you would not destroy it for the carrots that seemed to be very hard now you could almost bend it and it would bend like this but she noticed something strange with the coffee the coffee looked like the smallest of the seeds there and when she put it the entire water had turned to the coffee color and she said all of them were subjected to the same situation. One influenced the system and turned it to look like the color. The other one became a victim, became hard. The other one became soft. But the other one said, I will not only change, I will transform the system. Is someone learning now? You can be one of these three. Some of you were very hard now. Some of you were very soft now. 
Some of you look very small and you're looking at yourself and say, small me in such a system. Learn from the coffee seed. It transformed everything there. Same thing happens with salt. You pick a pinch of salt and put it around and turn it and that's it. You don't see it again, but you taste the food. It will establish its presence there. Even if you keep, even if the food spoils, the taste of salt will still be there. There are certain foods when they spoil, they will taste like something else. But as for salt, it will still be there. Is someone learning? You must be willing to drop age-long limiting unscriptural and anti-destiny beliefs. Number four, those who become, those who contend for transformation are those who are ready and prepared to face and endure the consequences of growth and progress. Are we together? Let me take it again. Those who become, those who are transformed, are those who are willing and are prepared to face the consequences and to endure the consequences of growth and progress. Let me tell you the truth. Contending for growth and progress comes with consequences sometimes unfavorable consequences but if you really want to be transformed you must be ready and prepared to face and endure the consequences of growth and progress daniel chapter 3 for sake of time let's start from verse 6 then we'll jump to verse 12 and we'll continue till i ask you to stop this was shadrach meshach and abednego remember King Nebuchadnezzar, there was a 90 feet statue of pure gold that was built. And he said, at the sound of whatever it is now, they should bow down. They would have bowed down and remained there. No promotion, no increase. But here it is. The Bible says, whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall at the same hour be thrown into the burning fiery furnace now go to verse 12 the bible says there are certain jews they were reporting them now and oh king they have not regarded you they have not served your gods they have not worshipped the golden image that you have set up next verse nebuchadnezzar heard this he was angry listen to me there are consequences for desiring to go forward when jesus said let us go to the other side the consequence of that decision was there was a storm the disciples almost lost their life advancement is not convenient transformation is not convenient it will change many things about you when you make up your mind that you want to carry genuine spiritual power you make up your mind that you want to be learned and sound in scripture i submit to you it will change many things are we together they brought this man before the king 14 Nebuchadnezzar spoke to them and said is it true that you have violated my commands 15 watch this now he now gave them one last chance doesn't it look like what life does choose to remain here and be comfortable or go through the controversy that comes with advancement 16 Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king oh Nebuchadnezzar we are not careful to answer you on this matter look at this gentleman 18 he said if it be so our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from this burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand 18 but if not but if not I know based on the word of God that as I advance into this business, as I advance in ministry, this is what should be. But if not, I rather fail following God than to mark time in fear. Those who, listen, those who move forward and are transformed are people who are willing to go through the discipline and the consequences. There are many of you, please listen to me. There are many of you making a decision for Jesus and making a decision for a meaningful life may cost you the sponsorship of those who are currently helping you they will make up your mind 
their minds and say, I will never help you. There are many people who are of many different faiths who came to Jesus Christ and their family members warned them and said, listen, we're giving you one last chance. Think about it and remain with status quo and find the comfort or make up your mind. And they made up their minds and for five years, nothing changed. They really suffered as a result. Let me tell you the truth. Advancement comes with severe consequences. Making up your mind for Jesus. You would think that after such a bold statement, God would not even allow the story to continue. He would step in. Do you know how frustrating it is to stand and defend the name of the Lord and the trouble they told you would happen still happens? As though God were not watching. 19. Learn something tonight. Nebuchadnezzar was angry at what he perceived to be their disdain and he commanded that they should hit the fire seven times hotter. Let's rush. 20. He commanded that the boys be cast into the fire. Next verse. And the boys were bound. As at the time they were tying them, brothers and sisters, God was watching in heaven. I wonder what they were saying. You thought that they were not afraid. They just said, God, you will come. It's a lie. They were humans. They were shaking like a leaf. So this is how we're going to die. But Lord, we defended you. How many of you know that there were people who stood before terrorists and they told them, renounce your faith and we'll kill you. They said we will not. They shot them and they died. Hmm. There are consequences when you want to go forward, my people. There are people today who would have been billionaires with compromise. But they gave up billions. Everybody called them fool, including we pastors. They say, you, there's a way you have done this thing. You are, you are really stupid. And they felt stupid later on. Because they thought that at the end of living a nice life, their superior will call them and say, I've watched you. I shall bless you. They say, now that your tenure is over, get out of this place. Let the person who walk with us come. Do you know how difficult it is when your loving God makes you look stupid? When your honoring God makes you look stupid, you would have compromised and by now you would have had a job. But for three years you have refused. What of the politician who would have compromised and become a governor or a senator? He was given the offer and he said, no, for the sake of my faith. Is someone learning? Transformation is costly. It's not just sitting in your room and changing states. You must be ready to face and endure the consequences. Let's finish this scripture. 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the fiery furnace was put so hot, it slew those that the men threw. 23. And the three boys fell down bound in the burning fires. There are times where God can stop you from even entering the fire. But there are times, sadly, ladies and gentlemen, you will still enter that fire. But trust him enough. Trust him enough. So you are making up your mind. You will never follow any man for money again. You are making up your mind. You are going to serve the Lord and have a, dignity, a, a destiny of dignity and color. And your friends can warn you. You know that your accommodation in Abuja, you know how it, it, and where are you going to get 1.2 million from? And you make up your mind. And then your rent expires. And you drop your prayer request in a miracle service. And afterwards, your landlord is waiting for you. You flog it out and nothing seems to happen. You have a choice to go back. But I have said it here. The same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to move forward. Whether you go back or go forward, you are not where you were and you are not where you need to be. It is wiser to continue. Is someone learning? 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men who were loose, walking in the midst of the fire. They have no heart, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. I don't know everything about God, but there is something I know about God, that when God decides to honor your pressing into him, I've taught it here, for many years you will look like a fool, but the day your deliverer arises, 
For many years, your church may not seem to grow because you have refused. You will not go and dapple your hand and collect any power, whatever. For many years, they will not promote you in the office because they told you that they should corporately collect bribe and you refused. They insulted you for being a Christian. You cried and said this and that and that. God can arise, oh. He does arise. And when God arises, he said, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. 26, watch this. Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, this and that and that, come forth. And they came out in the midst of the fire. 27, we're stopping at 30. The princes, governors, captains, and all those people were there. The Bible says, not a hair. Of their head was singed their bodies the fire had no power and there was no smell of fire that passed on them then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said blessed be the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego he gave a decree by reason of their courage to remain for someone God is speaking to you remain turning back is wasting the destiny of the thousands connected to you you have already started the journey of transformation don't go back when your father got to this point, he was tired. The mockery was too much. He had to go back. Now you are suffering it. By the time you go back, your children will suffer it too. It is better to press and finish. Do you know, I vowed to God and I said, everything, if there are any negative things that came from my background, I would rather pay the price and go through it as a person. Let me be the one to stand by God and win that war. That all who come from me and all the generations after us, are we together now? Yes. Some of us may need to make that decision. The, the lineage of poverty that you came from. Now you want to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity. Sometimes it may mean sacrificing 10 years of your comfort to contend for transformation. But if and when you do that, you would have started a dynasty of kingdom wealth and blessing. Are you willing to go that far? In many parts of Africa, when the missionaries came and they brought the gospel, some of them, when they waved their wives goodbye, they really meant it. Their wives knew they would not come back. They knew they would not come back, and yet they still went. Hallelujah. You must be ready to endure the consequences of growth and progress. Who is this that is staying in our house? You are always praying. You are not a pastor. But sir, you know the background. Don't pray anything. If you are going to continue praying and continue studying, you are getting out of my house. And sometimes you are going to have to make that choice. And you go out of your house, you carry your little bag, and you are strolling like a madman in the middle of the night. And you are saying, Lord, I'm doing this for you. Listen to my, the part of the teaching that I taught here in Koinonia, when God is silent. It is a painful thing when God is silent. God speaks, but he's not always speaking. He can be silent. The call for you at that point is to keep changing. Keep changing. Lord, but I love you. I thought by now I would have been able to pay this rent. I thought by now ministry would have opened up. I thought the business would have worked. Let me tell you the truth. There are many times in your journey towards destiny actualization that you will not have answers. Don't be under pressure to give answers. Wait for the answer to come. Especially the answer of where is your God. Anybody who asks you where is your God, if you answer it, you are wrong. You are not the one who should answer that question. <clears throat> the moment they say where is your God, that answer should be transferred back to God. You've heard me say, if you take the shame, you have been taking the glory. You can't be taking, God cannot be taking the glory and then you take the shame. Whoever takes the glory must take the shame together. You claim you are a man of God. Nobody has been healed. The people who are blessed, today 10 members, today 50 members, and someone will tell you there's something I can do, and in one month, your ministry will change. And sometimes it can be tempting because you're a human being. Somebody will say, I told you five years ago you'll be a failure. This God thing, 
Remember, when you were on campus, I told you this stupidity will land you in trouble. Now, 10 years later, you are pastoring 20 members. I have an estate somewhere. There are times it looks foolish to stand on God's side. But when you stand there as surely as the sun rises after night, I can tell you your deliverer will come. And when he comes, he will come in grand style. He will pick you in the presence of all who saw you. I'm speaking this prophetically for someone because for someone you came to church and every time you hear people prophesy, maybe you are a mother outside, maybe you are someone, maybe you are a man of God still in your spiritual, your walk with God and sincerely things are not working. Every time you see people testify here, you can't say they are lying but from their testimony you keep, you keep asking God, is it that you are not seeing me? I come early for miracle service by 10 o'clock I am here. Nobody calls me, nobody prophesies. Other people are falling down and rising. I'm just there watching them as if God is not aware of me. And then, instead of things getting better, it even gets worse after the miracle service. It's like the louder I shout amen, the more it does not happen. Can I tell you, it is okay to cry. It is not unscriptural. Even Jesus wept. But one thing you are not allowed to do is to draw back. Listen very carefully. The Bible says, fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, it will not overwhelm you. Then it says, when you walk through the fire, when it has to do with fire, you don't run. You walk through the fire. And I, I, I wish God would tell you, you only walk for one year. Sometimes you will walk for a long time. A long time. A lonely path that does not make sense. When Job was sitting down, ladies and gentlemen, do you know what it meant if I were to interpret Job's situation? I would say this man must have been an evil man. Nemesis would have caught him. The world would say the law of karma has caught him. And that was a sincere man who sat down to the point that his last support. You know what it means when your wife looks at you and says, listen, you know I love you. We've been on this journey for a long time. But please, I prefer you dead so I can rest. If some naysayer is talking somewhere, you don't care. But now your wife. And Job said, though he slay me. Hmm. Though he slay me. Yet will I trust him. Though he slay me. Some of you, your classmates will come and see you. And after 10, 20, 25 years of graduation, they are coming with their estates and their jeeps and everything. And you are there. They say, what are you doing now? I say, well, uh, well I'm, I'm a secretary in one church. And they just nod their heads and say, oh dear. If you need any help, please call my Nigerian office. I live in Dubai now. And there is a way people can say it that they rub it on your face. And you just stand there and say, God, what is this? If you have not gotten to this realm, it's because there's something you are not doing right. I assure you. If it is the road to destiny, you must meet this realm someday. No, these are not realms you pray away. You only pray for grace to pass through it. The journey of becoming only happens in that wilderness. The journey of becoming does not happen when you are taking coffee and sipping. No, 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 no. It's a painful journey. For many years in your life, I, I, let me repeat it again. No matter the kind of leverage you have, if it is God you are seeking and the, his kingdom, there will be a level where nobody's sermon will really be able to matter to you again. You will have to be the preacher and the prophet of your destiny at that point. If it has not happened to you, I'm informing you ahead of time. Because for some of you, maybe you are about to enter that season. Remember what I taught you about trainings. You have been receiving the training of one who protects. So when you see warriors, you say, oh dear, I pity these people. Now you are about to begin the training of a warrior. Go and go to NDA and see how they train military men. Sometimes these men are asked to roll inside mud. You, you will say this is dehumanizing, but they are preparing them and they kick them. Kick them again. Yes, sir. Ah. I fear no evil by the water still my 
I don't trust in it I can trust in you even when I no longer trust in the future do you know there are times people can ask you how is that future and sincerely if you are to be honest you don't even know what to say again there are times people are, are you still in the ministry will you still continue if you are honest there are times you don't have an answer hear the word of the Lord when you cannot trust in it trust in him when the boat can no longer carry you, trust in the person who is sleeping in that boat. My heart will trust in you, Lord. My heart will lean on you. My heart will cry to you, Lord. My heart hear me there are realms you get to where no matter how strong you are your tears will not ask you again it will come by itself you will stand there courageous sometimes maybe helping others through their storms but there are times the tears will say I've tried I've waited for five years it will have to come Jesus the miracle worker who raised others from the dead on his way to becoming that king of kings and lord of lords in experience the Bible says he wept he prayed I wonder what he was saying the Bible gives us a little and he says he repeated it again father if it be thy will let me tell you there are times that this journey to destiny is very hard someone who came to marry you and he's not serious with God you would have said yes you would have married a wrong person but you would have been free you said no ten years ago until now ten years later and people will see you and say you are a stupid girl you would have simply married that unbeliever you stood expecting God to honor you and it's 10 years now what do you do when what people are saying about you is true though I walk through the valley organize the crusade they told you there is witchcraft within that territory that if you organize that crusade it can cost you your life and you still went souls were saved and on your way returning there was an accident how do you explain that you stood on the crusade ground and you shouted and you told them Jesus heals let me tell you this when what you believe is not yet your reality here is what to do stand 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 i'm prophesying no i'm not preaching some of you in the night while you are sleeping you will hear the voice of this preacher again telling you remember god spoke through him stand you are about to compromise stand you are about to abort destiny Whereas heaven is clapping for you for your stamina and your endurance. Stand. 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 Kali Katosiata. Stand. Politician, stand. Man of God, stand. Remember, nobody has risen as a revivalist, a revivalist in your village. Stand. You are the one God is counting on. It is painful, but stand. 
stand let me sing one song for you and then we'll wrap up I will hold on through the storm I will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men lifter of men i will hold on through the storm and i will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men I know a man of God, very simple man of God, he's gone to be with the Lord now. Great healing man of God, loved God with all his heart. And one day, they discovered that he had cancer. And initially, he shrugged it off and waved it off. The naysayers laughed and said, thank God. What happens when your naysayers find a reason to rejoice over you? Was it not the psalmist that said, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul? He says, O oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed and let my enemies not triumph over me. Listen, that man's health began to deteriorate and deteriorate and deteriorate and deteriorate. And I saw the way it shook the family. This, uh, this is a believing family that loved Jesus. And finally, he couldn't stand again. And he had to go. Mm. Please hear me. The Lord sent me to bring this message. These are not popular things. But let me submit to you by God. Becoming is very difficult. Becoming. Becoming an anointed man of God. One day God will give you an instruction to fast for one month, one year, one week. There are levels of consecration that will look as if God wants to kill you. This anointing you see is not just by laying on of hands. So believe me, you want to speak over people and swing open the gates of their destinies? <laughs> There are sacrifices. But those who become are those who must be willing to know that God is in this. And I will go all the way. I will go the way. All the way. All the way. There are missionaries who are in Nigeria today are in parts of Africa. They literally left their people. Left their comfort. Some of them resigned from jobs as successful people. And they answered the call. Abba, my people. Except you are motivated by something greater than the comfort of the now. You cannot make that sacrifice. Some of the men of God, you see that sometimes we abuse and insult. You don't know the things they left to serve the Lord. For many men of God, especially in Africa, it's not like they were total failures and they did not know what to do with their lives. Some of them were mandated by God to give up things. And they stood to bear the cross like fools. Some of them even unto death. Please sit down. Let's wrap up. Koinonia is quiet. But it is the truth. Let's wrap up. But the people that do know their God. This is the scripture we are discussing. We have looked at knowledge. The demands to have knowledge. The demands to be transformed. Now, watch this. This is the last step of the success equation. And very few people ever get to this third realm. Because the pain of overcoming the realm of being transformed, most people cannot endure to the end. A few walk their way to the finish line. But sadly, they just stop at the level of transformation. And that's why possibilities don't manifest in their lives. Do 
exploits. James chapter 1. Doing is the last step as far as destiny actualization is concerned. Action is demanded until and unless at some point in your life action is taken you will never be able to see results james 1 22 please give it to us let's hurry up so we can pray it says but be ye doers of the word not hearers only deceiving yourselves reading to 25 it says for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is he was he says but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty listen carefully and continue therein he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word let's finish the remaining what will happen to that man he said this man shall be blessed in his deeds action action the word exploits now i'm not talking about the verb there is the verb exploit right which means to selfishly take advantage of another for profit. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the noun, exploits. And that means I wrote here, notable, outstanding, or heroic accomplishments. Exploits. Notable, comma, outstanding, or heroic accomplishments. Do not forget what we are looking at, the roadmap. To a triumphant destiny that's the topic we're dealing with tonight and well considering for our text daniel 11 and 32 the b part the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do exploits we're bringing out the revelation from the statement know be and do we said these represent the three the tripartite junctions as far as the roadmap to an excelling life is concerned. Knowledge, number two, B, becoming, transformation. Now we're looking finally at doing. Write this down. Action requires courage. The first demand for doing is that you must be courageous. Action requires courage. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30. Numbers 13, 30. Action requires courage. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. We heard the word. We understand what God has said. We've taken our time to understand the demands. He says, let us go up at once and possess it. It takes going up to possess. Not just talking about it not just meditating on it hearing the information and the instruction is wonderful meditating upon it until you believe is wonderful but if and when you are done with becoming the next thing is to go up at once and possess it for we are well able we are well able to overcome it deuteronomy chapter 20 from verse 1 to 4 this scripture has blessed me for many, many years. Pay attention as I read. Deuteronomy 21 to 4. We're wrapping up. When thou goest out to battle against thy enemies and seeth horses, chariots, and a people more than thou, it says, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up from out of the land of Egypt. Reading to 4. And it shall be, when ye are come nigh to the battle, men of God, remember, you have a duty to approach and speak unto the people. Because battle is a moment of fierceness. There must be a system of encouragement and it is given to the men and the women of God. The priests, you are the ones who will speak to the people. Verse 3. And ye shall say unto them, Hear, O koinonia, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your heart faint. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. 
Say to the weary ones, your God will surely come. He will come and save. My God will come and save you. He will come and save you. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For, for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies and save you. Please hear me. If anyone tells you action does not require courage, that person lied to you. Action requires courage. You are touring virgin dimensions that you may never have gone there. It takes courage. Number two, action requires persistence and resilience. Do exploits. Those who do exploits are people who are persistent and resilient. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. Hebrews 6, 15, please. And so, after he had patiently endured, the he being Abraham, he obtained the promise. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Galatians 6 and verse 9. It says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. It takes persistence and it takes resilience. The first time we had our crusade, gauging by the standard today, you would not call it a very successful meeting. Because when debt, many things went, you know, we, we, very few people, I'm not sure we were up to 50, that entire theater for the crusade. After weeks of praying and preparing, you would look and say, this person is a failure. These people are failures. And the very next, as we were returning, God gave an instruction again to do another one. God for you. He will act as if he didn't see what happened to you. Are we together? Hmm. You gave somebody a lift, he stole your phone. By the next day, God will say, make sure you carry two people and bless them. Action requires persistence and resilience. Number three, action requires conviction. 2 Timothy 1.12 Action requires conviction. You will never be able to act until you are full of conviction. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, he said, I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Let me tell you the truth. The strength of your conviction determines the speed of your action. The strength of your conviction determines the speed of your action. You see why transformation is very important? Because as you begin to push against these walls by faith, it will take conviction. I submit to you by the God of heaven, even if I came to Abuja here and Koinonia started and I failed, I would not return back in shame. One thing for sure I would have done is I would have gone for a retreat to verify and re-verify again. God, is it my mind? Am I just acting in the flesh? Or is this true? Can I tell you, there are many things that are not working now in your life, but it does not mean that God is not there. All you need to do is to stay pushing with resilience resilience and persistence number four action requires unbending focus action requires unbending focus 313 philippians 313 action requires unbending focus brethren i count myself not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing. Somebody say one thing. One more time, say one thing. When you are focusing on 10 things, you don't have focus. It is usually one thing at a time. There has to be something driving you. 
this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth to the things that are before me, I press. Proverbs 4.25 on bending focus proverbs 4 25 on bending focus it says let thy eyes look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee that means you can't run how many of you have seen people who are running the finals of a hundred meter dash and whether someone is insulting you or someone is clapping for you you don't turn back your eyes is set on the finish line Part of the trainings of a winner is that the moment you start looking, ah, you are clapping for me. When it has to do with the race of life, both commendation and criticism can distract. You need to remain focused. On bending focus. Luke chapter 9 and verse 62. Action. Do exploits. Doing exploits requires unbending focus. Jesus said unto them, no man having put his hand on the, or to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Focus. Remember Lot's wife. The Bible warns us about the wife of Lot. She was already on her way out of Sodom and Gomorrah with the warning not to turn back. It says, and if any draw back, Hebrews 10, I believe, 38 or so. And if any draws back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. Hallelujah. If any draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Finally, doing exploits requires patience. Hebrews 6, 12. Patience. Hebrews 6 12 and that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience that's what it takes to inherit the promises first Peter chapter 5 and verse 10 we're wrapping up first Peter 5 and verse 10 but the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus listen it says after that ye have suffered a while make you perfect entire now establish you strengthen you and then settle you after you have suffered a while and remain pushing praying pressing acting he says he will make you entire perfect establish you strengthen you settle you romans chapter 8 and verse 18 he says for i reckon 8 18 that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Action requires courage. Action, doing exploits, requires persistence and resilience in the face of negative situations, discouraging situations. Action requires conviction action requires unbending focus and finally action requires patience now let's look at Daniel 11:32 as we prepare to pray now you will understand this scripture but the people that do know they shall be and they shall do this is my message tonight the roadmap to a triumphant destiny to a triumphant life involves knowing, becoming, and doing. In that order, you can't do without becoming. You can't become without knowing. So let me read it this way. For you to do exploits, you need to be strong. And for you to be strong, you need to know. In this case, they are God. If you ever see anybody doing exploits, know that that person must have been strong. He became to do. And for that person to have become, are we together? That person must have submitted himself to knowledge. A naive medical student goes to the university as a school living certificate holder with the potential of becoming a doctor. What happens? Knowledge. Knowledge. They keep pumping knowledge for over six, seven years. And the medical doctor is evolving out of the ordinary person 
there is a becoming happening and do you know within the limit of his practice he will not be allowed to do certain things because he's still becoming sooner or later he gets accustomed to the medical practice and then by the time he's done he's now given liberty to start doing and then the process reverses uh, the process continues again even though he is a graduate he's not called a consultant is that correct knowledge starts again another version of becoming happens and then he can do exploits greater knowledge greater becoming greater exploits small knowledge small becoming small exploits high level knowledge high level transformation high level exploits the choice is yours i said before you life and death I said before you a mediocre destiny and a life of kingdom exploit that brings great glory to God and dignity to you and posterity judging you faithful by reason of your finishing strong I have fought a good fight I have finished my cause I have kept the faith I remind you again as I started that in destiny you must know how to fight. You must know how to finish. You must know how to keep. Please rise up on your feet. I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. My story is about to change. You're the lifter of men. The lifter of men. If you can, for one minute, may I request that you hold the hand of someone just close to you. We're about to pray. Please, let's minimize movement. There, let me just make a very important announcement. Please, as much as possible, avoid walking out before the service is over. It's spiritual indiscipline. If you have stayed for no matter how long, the extra five minutes you spend will not change anything, not your going home, not whatever. He's in discipline. Are we together? In many assemblies, they close the door, they do whatever. We don't have to do that. Please. There is nothing that is such an emergency. You're rushing to get a car. You're rushing to do this. One prophetic word in closing the service may be your word. God can reserve your word to the end. I notice that every time we make altar calls, you see, once we're done, many people are, it's an attitude of a baby Christian. And for some of you who do that, some of you are pastors, you are leaders, avoid that. Hallelujah. Yes. Let us close with decency and then you leave. It does not take more than a minute to do an altar call, more than a minute or two to say a prayer. I just needed to say this. Don't do it in Koinonia, don't do it anywhere except for very specific reasons maybe you're a guest minister and you need to leave or some kind of thing there is a system that allows you but ordinarily don't do that this is part of the kingdom culture that we must learn hallelujah for some of you you can be living whereas the people god brought you to church to meet after church are there but because you are rushing you are rushing into nowhere it shouldn't be so please I love you and that's why I want you to receive. It's a culture that you should not practice. It is very, very wrong. Whether you are outside, you are inside, discipline yourself as much as possible. If you have endured through two, three, four hours, five more minutes, I'm not sure. If it's an emergency, that's fine. But aside that, please discipline yourself. So stay and join the prayer and let us pray. I owe a responsibility to teach you the culture of the kingdom. And in this house, we're a house of order, and we're house of honor. So even when you invite people to come, please let them learn. We don't believe in policing people and using force, but revelation should upgrade you to a realm of maturity. Are we together? So we'll pray just two prayer points tonight. Number one, you're going to cry to God and say, Father, I obtain grace to contend for knowledge and the transformation that comes with that knowledge and then the grace to act. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Someone is praying from the depth of your heart. Shalika paroska dibaleyasa. Lift your voice to Jesus. Thank you, Father. The people that do know 
I obtain grace to know. I obtain grace to know. In the name of Jesus, someone is praying. I obtain grace to know. In the name of Jesus, I receive the meekness that helps me to know. I obtain grace to ask questions that help me to know. I obtain grace to be willing to sacrifice my time, my energy, my resources to buy the truth so that I will know. I obtain grace to place value on knowledge and to retain superior knowledge. Now pray on becoming. I contend for the grace to become before doing. I recognize that this is not the best version of me. I lay aside my current failures, my current successes, and I press in the name of Jesus, becoming a greater spiritual version, a greater financial version. A greater intellectual version I upgrade my references kingdom worthy models and references that guide and challenge my transformation in the name of Jesus I give up age-long limiting on scriptural anti-destiny beliefs and I embrace superior beliefs in the name of Jesus I obtain grace to face and endure the consequences that come with growth, that come with transformation. Now pray for exploits. I receive grace to be courageous. Courageous. Even when it does not look like it. To hold on to the word of God and to believe. I receive grace to be persistent and resilient. I receive grace to be a person, a man of God, a businessman, a family man, a politician with convictions. Convictions that provide the energy, the drive to take action. I receive grace to be of unbending focus. Unbending focus. And in the name of Jesus, I receive the patience, the staying power to remain until the word of God manifests in my life. For in Jesus name we pray. Last prayer point. I want you to declare that your prophetic destiny, the place that has been earmarked for your prophetic destiny, if it requires a fight, Declare that you are a victor in Christ. If it is a race, require declare that you run with the speed. He says, he says, he makes my feet like hind's feet. That you run and redeem time. And your bishopric that you will keep it and none will take. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus, the grace to fight a good fight of faith. The grace to run with the speed of, of, of a gazelle. The speed of of, of, of a, the fastest animal to run with it in the name of Jesus and with the strength of an ox. The grace to keep the faith, to keep the call, to remain, to stay, to be strong till the end. For in Jesus' name I pray. Now very quickly, our time is up. There are people here who are yet to surrender their lives and their everything to Jesus. Whilst you heard the word coming, the Holy Spirit began to speak to you, telling you that you need to make your ways right. Or you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I remember giving my life to Christ, but right now I need a rededication. Any of those two categories, whether you are inside, remember, the first person to know is God not just your destiny helpers not just an information the people that know they are God and you're saying apostle I cannot really say I know my God this is eternal life John 17 and verse 3 that they may know you the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent I want to make this altar call right now our time is up as I count one to five I want you to leave your seat whether you are inside or outside I want you to come and stand here very quickly Jesus wants to give you a new beginning and don't wait for someone to come before you follow them to come 
Hallelujah. Wherever you are, I begin my counting now. Let's celebrate them as they come. One. God bless you. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. If you're coming rush, please come to Jesus. He's able to give you a new beginning. You can start afresh again. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Come and join them. You can have the assurance of salvation this night. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm about to lead them to pray. So if you are coming, please run. You may need to double up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want to salute you for making this courageous decision. We just thought that it takes courage to take action. And you have taken a very noble action. This is the wisest decision that any man can make under the sun. Thank you for the courage to have made this decision. May I request that you please lift your right hand. That includes those who are watching from home, those who are watching by way of television, even by way of a rebroadcast. It is never too late to surrender your all and your everything to Jesus. Please lift your right hand and say this after me. Let it be loud and clear from the depth of your heart. Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I need to know you. I declare that I cannot help myself, but I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. The Lord bless and honor your prayer, and I declare by the authority of Scripture, that you are bona fide recipients of eternal life. You'll go from glory to glory and grace to grace in Jesus' name. May I please request that you follow the counselors. You're in front here, they are by my right. May God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Hallelujah. Now, before I speak over your life finally, just to remind you that this, um, this week, on Friday, we'll be having the School of Ministry graduation ceremony for Zaria, our Zaria campus. So we'll be in Zaria on Friday. But for Abuja, it's going to be on Sunday. So next week, please let us come to celebrate our graduates. Hallelujah. Our School of Ministry students. By the way, for the Abuja campus, this is the largest set we have, we have ever taken. There are over 500 students who will be graduating. Can you imagine that? Hallelujah. So invite your loved ones, invite everyone, and come and share your people. Let's celebrate what God uh, is doing. It's going to be a time of impartation. They'll be receiving their certificates. We'll be speaking over their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. A few announcements very quickly. The Public Relations Department is opened for Abuja now. It's open for uh, new members, all applicants, all those who want to become part of our public relations and correspondence department. Please send in your request, your application via email to prkoinonia, prkoinonia as one word, at gmail.com, indicating your interest. Address the letter to the head of department. Application closes by 11 p.m. this night, 11 September. You can go to the PR desk after, uh, just outside the, the main auditorium for more information and then the ushering department our ushers need more hands god is expanding uh, the ministry there are so many people and the ushers are limited so they are asking for more hands all interested persons should please meet a representative at the pr desk so you want to be part of the usher the, the ushering team Please wait outside very briefly after the service at the PR desk and there will be an official there who will address you. Have you been blessed tonight? In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you. Amen.
I speak over your life that your weak beginning will be full of signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that this is a week of exploits for you. Even as you have learned the grace to put what you have learned to practice. In the name of Jesus, no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, let it fall in judgment. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the country. I prophesy favor upon you. That when people are testifying of favor next week, you must be part of them. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the grace for honor rest upon you. Your fire, your prayer fire remains in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word fire remains in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no going down for you. You go more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you together. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our life, Amen. God bless you and see you next week. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.